So this is my homie Rich, Hydrilla Gear. You guys can check him out. I'll put a link down in the description box. So Rich, you know a lot more about boats, and you're kind of a speed guy. Ooh. You've <laughs> he is a speed guy. You've had some fast boats. I'm not a super speed guy, but I would like to get a few more miles an hour sure. out of my nitro. What are what are some general? I know obviously the prop. We'll get to that part. But what are some other things that that I can do to kind of tweak that performance? Like where do I start? What are some factors to look at? I'm gonna say key factors: balance in the boat. What do you mean by that? Um, Positioning, you know, like nowadays, everybody has a bunch of tackle. They want to okay. run in the boat. Yep. Um, and they forget about that when they start trying to set up the boat for performance. Okay. So they'll start messing with the prop, jack plate, heights, setbacks, uh -huh. but they don't touch anything else in the boat. And you can have all this weight forward when it should be midship or further back. Interesting. And you're not going to get the results that you're looking for if the boat's not balanced. And so, it'll make it harder to drive as well. So when you're talking about bass, so that's something you even look at before we look at like the prop and that. So sure. where do I want most of my weight on a bass boat? Um, depending on the brand boat, you're going to want it, I would say, midship further back. Midship to further yeah. back. And especially, so this is another aspect. So I need to kind of rearrange my tackle midship to further back. I have lithium batteries. Yeah. And I know in some boats that, that makes that back lighter and can take away from performance. Sure. Or is it a question of how you place and sort of like lay out those lithiums? It's going to be mainly, um, it's not going to be layout of lithiums. The best thing to do if you're going to run, in my opinion, if you're going to run lithium batteries, right. pull all the stuff out of the boat. Pull okay. all your tackle out of the boat. Yep. Um, put the lithium batteries in the boat, take it to the water and run it. Okay. And see what's going on. Now, a lot of these guys, uh, there are certain boat brands, notorious, they put lithium batteries in the boat, the boat slow down five miles an hour. It has no bow lift, uh -huh. things like yep. this, right? Essentially, they're lightening up the back of the boat and there's still a bunch of weight further forward. You need to get that weight further back. You leverage, set back with jack plate, things like that are gonna be able to help you get the, the bow up. Personally, myself, I run a duffel bag of plastic, soft plastic, right, so you probably got 150 got pounds in the bottom of your boat. Dude, yeah. Take that duffel bag, throw it in the bilge, and uh -huh. go run it and see how the boat handles. You're gonna really? notice it's either gonna help or it's gonna hurt. And that can make that much of a difference. 100%. Uh, so then in regards to the prop, and I know it, it really varies sure. like 100% yeah. per boat. I run the stock prop that I get from on my Mercury 250. I think it's it's that what's on right here, the 23P, like yeah. the standard. What do I want if I wanted to start playing with props? And I think it's a question that a lot of guys ask. What, where do I even start? Like, what, what's a good, do you go up in pitch? Do I go to a four blade? Like, I'm really an amateur with this stuff. Like, what, what's the first thing to look at? I would start with what your dealer's gonna strap on there because you've already paid for that, basically, yeah. right? Right. So a lot of, like, especially a Ranger, they're gonna come in here with a 23 Fury on it, uh -huh. typical 250 setup, go run the boat. Right. See what you got, see what you got for water pressure, see what you got for speed, um, and then look at your RPM. And depending on where your RPM is, right. high or low, you're gonna change props. Okay. So typically if we had a three blade prop and we're looking for about, I don't know, but rule of thumbs, 250 RPM. Okay. We want more. Okay. Right, we're gonna drop a pitch. Okay. Let's say we want to tighten that RPM up a little bit. So we want to drop about 250. Okay. We're gonna pick up a pitch. So when you so dropping a pitch is, okay, so dropping a pitch would be 22, going up a pitch is 24. That's then. correct. And that's, and what what is pitch? Like it just oh, a bit. Now you're gonna get me in yeah. trouble. <laughs> but basically, so you're gonna have pitch, you're gonna have rake, it's all the magic that's, that's pounded into these blades. Right. Okay, you know, different industry, but um, yeah, I mean that's. But the, it's kind of like the length of the the tongue and then how it's like bent. No, I mean out that's all going to be diameter, but it's okay. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's just the way that they measure the props and. Um, yeah. I can't so in it. my situation with my with my Z20, I, when I'm doing, I can do about seventy, and and I'm spinning like six thousand, just around six thousand, six two hundred, okay. something like that. So I guess in my case, I want to drop my RPMs to get more out of it. I would assume and maybe go up and try a twenty four to get started because I don't really want to spend more than that. Well, you're around six thousand. Yeah. Seventy mile an hour. Yeah. I mean, what's the average of the average speed you're seeing out of those boats? I'll bet with boat donors. 70, I think 70 to 73 or You're so. You're right there. I'm right there. Yeah. So I don't even need to make a change, you don't think? It. Really? Yeah. 
So sometimes it's just better to let it kind of be instead sure. of playing around with the motor blowing the thing out. Yeah, I mean, it, you're gonna have, you're gonna have um, time doing your research, right? So just like when you're buying your boat, right? Right. You're looking at brands. You're paying attention to speeds, no matter what people say. I'm happy with my boat doing 60. Okay. Right. But when they researched that boat, they were looking and this joker does 75 miles an hour. Yeah. So they want to run 75 miles an hour. Now, was that an outlier? Yeah. Is the average 70? You're going to be happy with 70. You're going right. to have outliers every now and then. The guy might do 75, 73. Right. But again, that's. So I guess sometimes part of the point is, so I wanted to maybe try to get more on my boat, but sometimes there's a reality. There's a ceiling and you're not gonna get more than what you get out. Sure. Like you might be able to tweak a mile an hour <clears> more, <throat> but the reality is like there's a certain ceiling, every single hull has its own ceiling. Everything so has So you gotta kinda do your research, figure out where your ceiling is, and, and if you're there already with your stock, or if you need to make some tweaks and kinda screw around with it a little bit. Yeah, and you gotta remember too, if your average, if the average setup like this is 72 miles an hour, right? and then you go and add forward facing sonar, yep. you go and add an 85 pound trolling motor, yep. Mega 360, Active Target 2, yep. you know, LVS 34. All the shenanigans. All that is gonna impact the way the boat handles, the balance of it, the speed, right. the way it, it the way it feels when you're driving it. And you gotta be careful. You know, you start putting 200 pounds of crap on the nose of a boat, uh -huh. and now it's tournament morning, they've called your number, you're all tuned in, and you're trimming it up you're only gonna get so high before that weight's gonna impact the nose of the boat and it's gonna drop the nose. Yeah. So, <clears throat> again, average speed of your boat's 70 miles an hour. You start adding all this stuff to it. You lose a couple mile an hour, that's normal. You know, right. you, you can't, you, you can't, you can't ask too much. On that. Yeah, yeah. And and it, there's, there's a limit. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I enjoyed this and these are some tweaks that you can sort of assess or maybe not make. I think that's part of the trick too, is understanding where your ceiling is, understand what you can get out of the boat. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's a little shop talk with Rich. We're gonna be doing a few of these videos and talking about how you can tweak out your bass boat, get the most out of it, and sort of, you know, make it all extra fancy in that. So hit that like and subscribe button. We will see you back from the shop, hanging out with Rich, and definitely check out Hydrilla Gear down in the description box. Tight lines, homies. <laughs>